So I'm Leah Harris, certified aromatherapist and founder of usingeosafely.com and one of the admins of the Using Essential Oils Safely Facebook group. We actually have two. We have Using Essential Oils Safely, which is an archive group, and then we have the new Using Essential Oils Safely. I noticed that there were a ton of new requests to the archive group, and I think it's because of everybody watching this and me just saying that and they're going to the old group. Long story short, Facebook, it just disappeared one morning. We had about 72, 73,000 people in our group, and I guess Facebook decided it was just too big. A lot of other big groups disappeared as well, and they totally just, it was gone for a couple of months. So in the meantime, we started a new group. So hence the name new, using essential oil safely. Um, but we, when the old group mysteriously just reappeared again, we did definitely want to keep it. So we're trying to keep all of the new traffic in the new group and just keep the old group for archive purposes. Plus there's so many of you guys in there. So that's why the confusion in the names. But thank you so much for joining me on the weekly essential oil mini course. Today we're going to be discussing clove essential oil. And this is a mini crash course for anyone interested in learning more about essential oils. It will be done every week. I do plan on doing the blabs. Obviously I'll be doing the blabs with Daphne and Christy on Sundays um, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just notice my earring is whacked out. Um, but I do believe that I will be doing um, blabs on Mondays as well for those of you who cannot do the blabs. Um, I'm sorry, we'll be doing periscopes on Mondays for those of you who cannot attend the blabs. Um, today we're discussing clove. Um, I'm going to focus on a single essential oil one week and then the other week I'm going to be focusing on a blend. So today we're talking about clove and we will be reviewing the therapeutic properties, the benefits, and show you ways how to use this oil safely with your family. And then I will be opening up a Q&A at the end. Um, if you guys do have any questions while I'm talking and I don't catch it, then please re-ask because I do have notes that I'm actually reviewing so I'm not necessarily watching every comment but I do want to get all of your comments and questions so please re-ask me. I actually am going to take a break between different sections. So what I want to do is get started with a quote from Christina um, from our group who mentioned that she was really excited to learn more about clove because it's an oil she's kind of afraid to use because it is hot. And that is exactly why I chose to kick off these essential oil courses with clove because it is a really awesome essential oil. It's one I think every home should have, but it's also one that does have safety considerations. So before we get into the safety though, I do want to discuss the good news. I want to talk about the benefits. But before we discuss benefits, we have to understand how we're coming up with these benefits. So. To begin with, the essential oil, it's not just one ingredient. We call this clove essential oil. It's not just one ingredient. It's made up of dozens, often hundreds of constituents. And that's what we call the essential oil. Just like cake is not cake, it's really made up of eggs and flour and butter. Same thing with essential oils. Now, scientists and researchers have studied many of these constituents and have been able to determine how they affect the body. And some of these constituents are beneficial, and that is where we get th therapeutic properties. And others can cause adverse reactions, such as skin irritation, phototoxic reactions when exposed to the sun, etc. Hi, Christy. Okay, awesome. So the sum of these constituents is what actually makes up an essential oil and tells us how we can use it and if there's any caution involved. So first of all, I'm going to list a few of the therapeutic properties. Thank you for all the hearts of clove essential oil. And I just want to tell you real quickly that you can find the full list of therapeutic properties on using eosafely.com slash clove EO. I have an image right there for you. It's pinnable and there's a whole list and I'm just going to read a few of those analgesic, anti-infectious, antimicrobial, carminative, nervine, it's a circulatory stimulant, warming, and there's a few others as well. So from these therapeutic properties, which are attributed to the specific constituents, we can then assume that clove essential oil is going to have the following benefits. It can be good for arthritis, poor circulation, gas and bloating, colds, germs, anxiety, achy muscles, headaches, asthma, topical skin imbalance such as athlete's foot and other fungal issues, 
So there's a whole wide range. And again, I do have an image for that as well on using eosafely.com slash clove eo. You can find several benefits that is that are attributed to clove essential oil. It's useful for so many things. So before you start, you know, just diving in and using it for a whole bunch of things, I just want you guys to understand what the safety considerations are. Now, these are considerations. That means it's just something to review and consider and decide if this is something that matters to you specifically. Some safety considerations are only pertinent to those who are on medications, etc. Um, there are also some safety considerations that um, are actually um, going to affect pretty much everybody. So for clove essential oil, um, if you use more than the topical max, which is 0.5%, that means when you're diluting, my rule of thumb that I like to go by is 1% is one drop and one teaspoon of carrier. So if you want a half a percent, because we can't do a half a drop, what I like to do is just double the carrier. So you can do one drop of clove essential oil in two teaspoons of carrier. So that's how you would get a half a percent. And if you use more than the recommended dilution on the skin, it can cause adverse reactions such as redness, irritation, skin sensitization, or mucous membrane irritation. And this goes for anybody. This goes for anybody. Now, where, you, where there's caution involved and where this might apply to some of you and it might apply, not apply to some of you, is to use caution if you are taking medications or have a bleeding disorder. If you are about to have surgery, if you have damaged skin, Actually, damaged, damaged skin would definitely be the one that would apply to anybody. Obviously, not everybody is going to go into surgery, so not everybody needs to avoid it. But if you are on blood thinners, even if you take aspirin, certainly you do not want to use clove essential oil internally. You also might have issues, though, if you use it topically. And yes, even if you inhale it. If you are prone to nosebleeds, you really want to be careful to make sure that you can diffuse around clove because you really do not want to be causing any problems for you. And that is a personal choice, you know, that you have to determine for yourself if that is something that you want to do. It is not going to be a risk for any for everybody. So the shelf life of clove essential oil <clears throat> is about four years. And this can be extended if you refrigerate, just like all essential oils. They really love to be cold, so they can last longer if you refrigerate them. If you don't have a refrigerator devoted to essential oils, as a lot of people don't, then what you can do is just keep them in a cool, dark place. You can keep them in your cabinet, you know, as long as, you know, there's not excessive light. And light is more damaging than heat. Essential oils actually are they're steam distilled to get the essential oil. So, you know, although it, they, are, they do last longer when they're kept cold, it's really okay to keep them room temperature. Just know that it may not last as long as you would like. That being said, with clove lasting four years on average, you're probably going to go through the bottle before four years. And just to answer if you guys have any questions about shelf life, what happens once they're oxidized, you can actually find us on using eosafely.com slash shelf life. And that will give you more um, more information on exactly what happens to the essential oil once it gets oxidized. But generally speaking, if it does, if it is oxidized, you can still use it for cleaning. You can still use it in the laundry. You can still diffuse with it. You just want to avoid using it topically because it can irritate your skin. Now, clove essential oil is safe for pregnant and breastfeeding moms. It is safe to inhale and apply topically. Just follow the dilution guidelines. It is safe for children to inhale. You can diffuse it around them. It is not recommended, though, that you use it topically on children under the age of two, even if you're following the 0.5% um, dilution max. And it is also not safe for pets. It's not recommended for dogs or cats. So does anybody have any questions on the therapeutic properties the benefits or the safety. And then what we can do is we can get um, into ways to use. Does anybody have any questions? No, it is not recommended that you diffuse around dogs. No. What you can do is you can keep them in a separate room. 
can you boil? Um, if you're talking about, if you're just simmering something on the stove and you want to add some essential oils to your boiling water, is that, is that what you mean to diffuse them into the air? You can do that. Yes, heat, some heat can damage essential oils long term, but I mean, if you're talking about it's in hot water and you're adding them and they're being diffused into the air, then they're used up. It's not like you're going to go ahead and then take that and apply it to your skin. So yes, absolutely. You can do that. Yes. Any other questions? Yep. You can do that. You can boil oregano. That is fine. I prefer cool diffusing myself, but that's just me. Um, you definitely can add it to the water, yes. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it is not recommended that you diffuse near dogs. If if you want to use clove essential oil or a blend that contains clove essential oil, I recommend you use a personal inhaler and you can add some drops to that and you can just breathe it for yourself. Or if your dog is in another room, you can diffuse. You just generally don't want to diffuse if the dog is in the same room. 0.5% is one drop to two teaspoons carrier. Yes. Yes, it is. And for more dilution charts and questions, you can go to usingeosafely.com slash dilute. And that will give you more answers too. And fortunately, it's a 0.5 and not a 0.4 and a 0.7. Because then the math gets really, really annoying. You're welcome. The risk of diffusing near dogs, that is a really great question. Um, you, I don't have any specific um, what the risks are. Um, if you go to using eosafely.com slash safe dogs, then you can learn more about um, the safety around dogs. Um, it may just be that there's really not enough information yet at this point to determine if it is safe, or it could just be that, you know, because it can be an irritant. You know, dogs have a really good sense of smell and, you know, it could be related to that. I honestly do not know the exact answer why it's not safe. Um, that, that's a really great question. There is a Facebook group. Let me see if I can find it for animals and essential oils. It's the only one that I personally recommend. There's several of them out there. So let me see if I can find that. It's like safe animal. Okay. Animal aromatherapy safe use. I think that's the one. Yes. So it's called Animal Aromatherapy Safe Use. And Kelly Azaro is the one who admins that group. She's really, really good. And that was that's a really great question. I, I would be interested to know as well what makes it not safe for dogs. I mean, it could be the eugenol. That's probably it right there, actually, is the eugenol. But if you're asking, like, what am I risking my dog if I... Yes. What am I risking my dog if I diffuse around them? Then, you know, I'm not sure exactly what your dog, dog would look like if you've diffused and your dog is having an adverse reaction, but it's just generally speaking, not recommended to use around dogs. So there are some ways that you can use. I know we went over, you're welcome. I know we went over, um, different benefits. And again, there's a link, um, using eosafely.com slash clove EO and it has all the benefits listed for you. Um, there's different ways to use depending on the benefits. Um, clove essential oil is really good for circulatory health and so if you have any circulatory issues it can really be good for stimulating that circulation. And if you if you have serious issues um, probably applying topically is going to be your best bet. If, if you have occasional issues or or whatever you can diffuse the thing is diffusing is more subtle and topical application is more direct, such as for blood clots. I would probably, if I had a blood clot, I would not rely on simple diffusing. I would be putting it on my skin. And there was a question last night on Blab that I'm, I'm going to address now too, is 0.5%, half percent is not very much. And if you have muscular aches and pains, 0.5% is probably not going to cut it. So I would suggest that you add other essential oils along with clove for those blends that you need. So let's say you want a 3%, yeah, acne. Let's say you want a 3% blend. What you could do is per two teaspoons, I'm gonna just make it easy, per two teaspoons, you can add one drop of clove and that would be your half percent. 
and then you could add if you added five drops of additional essential oils <clears throat> then that would give you six drops which would make it three percent so six total drops per two teaspoons one of those drops being clove the other five being something like helichrysum or lavender you want something that's also not an irritant you want something that's a little bit soothing to kind of counteract the pot you know the potential irritancy of clove so that is an option you can do um, for digestive health if you have any upset stomach you can diffuse and in, inhaling in a personal um, inhaler can also be a good option for you um, you can if you have pretty intense digestive issues you can apply it topically and again at that point I would recommend you go with a higher overall dilution but also include those other essential oils clove is also really great so one drop for a 10 ml roller bottle correct yes absolutely sorry my voice is like ugh. yes we did mention that on the blab last night as well yes if you have a roller bottle and it's a 10 ml one drop will do you so clove is also really good um wear it topically for digestive right over the abdomen, wherever you're having the, those issues, massage it right in, right over. And that is the most effective. For immune system health, I like to use clove and a personal inhaler. Um, I'm not really religious about it, but in theory, it's great to inhale anti-germ blends before being exposed to germs, like before going into a store, even after, you know, when you come out from a store or whatever it's really good to kind of breathe some in and it really helps get it in your lungs and kind of circulating in your body a little bit before you're exposed and you know it can really lessen those chances of you picking up germs and getting sick and I like to do it again after just as a double whammy and again I forget often but if it's cold and flu season or if you're going to be visiting somebody that has an illness and you know it's a really great way to you know boost yourself and really really help out in not get succumbing age safe for inhalation okay there is no minimum age for inhalation as a general rule we do recommend that children under the age of six months are generally not exposed to even inhaling essential oils but you know, there is no specific age limit for children to inhale. There is for topically, but not for inhalation. How many drops to an inhaler? Inhalers generally hold 15 drops of essential oil. As a general rule of thumb, I do recommend for children under the age of 10 that you only add 10 drops, just so it's not quite as intense. Diffusers are more subtle, inhalers are more direct and more powerful. So for real little ones, like if they're under say the age of five, um, you can just kind of waft it under their nose. You don't have to like make sure it's like right on there. Yeah, 19 months. I would just kind of like wave it around a little bit, something like that. Or you can even just use a diffuser. That's totally fine as well. So let me see. So it's really good for emotional health as well. It can promote mental clarity. It's a really good one too. Yes. Yeah, I love it. This, uh, th this is so good. I must need it, okay? I, I just must because when, ah, oh, just like, I just cannot get enough of smelling this. Like, ah, oh, it just like hits so good. It actually, it smells, um, a lot kind of like licorice almost. It's a really, really good clove. I love it. So it's good for respiratory health as well. If you have any congestion, is this good for pain associated with braces? Yes. This is really good for oral health. Yes. Um, for an inhaler, it's actually 15 drops. I mean, I'm sure it might be able to absorb 20, possibly, but everywhere I read and what I recommend is 15 drops. What you can do is you can put the drops on the end of the wick. Another way is you can use a, a very small bowl or even a plate, and you can apply your, your drops to the plate, and then you can take the wick and kind of roll it all around, and it will absorb all of that. Um, it just might leave a little bit on the plate. Where can you get an inhaler? There's some really great inhalers from River Tree Life I really like. They're aluminum. Actually, let me grab one for you. I actually have one right here. I have them in this handy little pouch. These are my favorite inhalers because they're so pretty. There's different colors too. Yes. 
River Tree Life, River Tree Life. These are awesome. I do have a link on using eosafely.com slash um, supplies, or maybe it's EO supplies, but there's at the menu on the top of my website, you can find supplies and click there, and then I have a listing, or you can go to Amazon and you can search for River Tree Life. It's River Tree Space Life on Amazon and then inhalers. And these are really great. See their glass inside. And this part is aluminum on the outside, so you can drop it and it's fine. And the wick goes right in here. Let me see if I can actually find. Let me grab a wick really quickly. I don't have one right here with it. Okay, so here, here's the wick. They also sell some separate inserts in case you want to just change it up that way. So what I like to do when I'm adding essential oils to my wick is I like to put this in a little bit, but not too much because it's a pretty tight squeeze. So I like to add the essential oil to the end and let it absorb. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and do it for you now so you can see. Let's do it right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah! It's like coming out really quick. So there you go. It's right in here. And then I just take the end of this and push it. It's actually almost cutting. Maybe I'll do it this way. I don't want to push it in the whole way because then it will be pretty much impossible to remove, which is okay because then when you want to go replenish, you can just add essential oils right on top of it again if you want to. But I like to leave it out just a little bit so I can replace the wick if I want. But you, you can reuse them. It's totally fine. So then you just screw that part on. And put this in here like this. And you're ready to go. So that's pretty easy. Let me find my cover to this. So yep, there's different colors. Those are my personal preferences. Um, I do have the plastic ones as well, and they work, especially for my kids. You know, they work. So how long do inhalers last? It can. It, it really depends on how often you use it. If you're really opening it every single day, then after a few weeks you might want to replenish and add some more essential oils. If you don't use it that often, it probably will last a few months, but you can just go by your nose. If you're smelling it and you notice that either it smells differently, which means some of the top notes have probably evaporated, then you can go ahead and just add more. Just add more right to it. If you can't smell it enough or if it smells different or funny, then just add more essential oils right to it. Or you can replace it. What do I prefer to blend with clove in my inhalers? I love blending orange or mandarin or tangerine. I love that um, clove orange smell. To me, that is just really, really yummy. But, you know, it, it depends on your purpose. Um, if you're inhaling for respiratory health, then you can add cypress or fir or sandalwood or something that's also really good for respiratory issues. You know, it really depends what your purpose is. If you're going by aroma alone, then I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, for antiviral purposes or anti-germ purposes. Well, that's that's what I was just going to say, the benefits of orange and clove. It's really good for anti-germ. They really complement each other really, really well. Not only do they smell great, but they have very similar properties as far as when you want that anti-germ um, immune system type effect for your body, then it's a really, really good combination. And it can also, it's really good um, for limbic issues as well. It's really good for mental clarity and for it can be good for calming, like reducing anxiety. That's a really good combination for that. Let me see what other combinations there might be. Yeah, for digestive, you might want to you might want to combine um, actually with orange as well is really good for digestive. When should the wick be replaced? So that's a really good question. Whenever you determine it needs to be replaced, <laughs> I mean, you can keep adding essential oils to it. If it starts falling apart, then you can replace it. If the smell's getting funny, you know, if it's just not holding it right, I mean, anything, it, it should last several months, really. It really should, so. Whenever you feel like this just isn't smelling right or looking right, then you can go ahead and replace it. So for, like, circulatory, I'm thinking what other to blend an inhaler for circulatory 
Um, cinnamon is a really good one, but it shares very similar properties with clove, which is good. It can be a great thing, but they also have very similar safety issues as well. So you're kind of giving yourself a double whammy, which is fine unless you are on blood thinners. Clove can be good for back pain. Yes. I do recommend that you combine it with like Copaiba and Helichrysum. Something to get that percentage up because you can only use it at half percent. Also the highest antioxidant value oil. What is this good for? It's, it is very antioxidant. There's plenty of essential oils that are. Um, but antioxidant is really good like for anti-aging. It's really good for, for skin issues. What is good for a stuffy nose with clove? Sandalwood, cedarwood, cypress, fir, lemon. Those would be really good for anti-congestion. Spearmint, peppermint for kids over 6, eucalyptus for kids over 10. Sorry, that last comment went away. I was trying to, to finish my thought there. Helichrysum, yes, the expensive one. Helichrysum metallicum, unfortunately. You can use a Splendidum. Um, I find it's just quite not as powerful, but, you know, go ahead and try it if that's what you want to do. There are there different cloves. There's clove bud, leaf, and stem, and they will have different aromas because they're from different plant parts, but they have all of the same safety information, and they have all of the same, basically speaking, therapeutic values as well. So you can use them interchangeably. I prefer the clove bud myself, aroma-wise. So I think there was a question. I'm sorry. It just... Okay, cotton wick. It comes with... Versus organic cotton wick. Oh, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's organic cotton or regular cotton. Because it's not touching you. It's not going to affect the essential oils either way. It's just a holder. So it really doesn't matter. At least not to me. You're welcome. <laughs> it's, it's not going to affect it. Um, it's just not. I, I see no reason why you have to switch to organic. But I guess that would be up to you. <laughs> So let's go over a few ways to use clove essential oil topically. I know we went over a couple of things. Um, somebody mentioned back pain. Yes, it's really good for back pain. It's good for arthritis, cartilage joint function, you know, any achy joint pain. It's really good for that as well. Um, for circulatory health, if you have any circulatory issues, you can use it in a blend and apply it topically. It's really great for digestive health as well. I think we went over this already. Apply it to your abdomen. Muscular health, yes. Muscular joint pain, soothing muscles after a hard day's work. It can be great for nervous health as well. If you have head and neck tension, it can be really great for headaches. I know a lot of people gravitate toward peppermint. Clove is also a really good one. Um, and it's safe for children to be around. So if you're concerned with using peppermint for headaches and you're around children under the age of six, and then you probably don't want to diffuse. You can obviously use it for yourself. You can put it in a personal inhaler and then you can use it for yourself. Migraines, yes, it can help with migraines. Now again, all of these, they're just general suggestions. Again, they go all the way back to the therapeutic properties um, that are you know, tied to those constituents, which clove is made out of. And so from there, we're determining what the health benefits are. Now, does not mean it's going to work for everybody. Some people might swear by clove for headaches. Other people might find no relief at all. So it's really great to have different options and find something that works for you. But if you find yourself really liking the aroma of clove, it's probably going to be more beneficial for you than it will be for somebody who really doesn't like the smell of clove. It's just not really going to help them as, as much. Yeah, peppermint doesn't work for me. Right, a lot of people swear by peppermint. A lot of other people say it doesn't work. So. You know, you just have to go by what works for you. These are just general recommended uses. Is it okay to inhale but not diffuse when child safety is of concern? Yes, for you. You can whip out your inhaler and you can smell it all you want. It's not going to affect your children. Diffusing is in a larger area. It will affect anybody in the room. So that is why I love personal inhalers. You can stick them in your purse. You can keep them in your car. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Ah, and thank you for the hearts. Those are really pretty. So let me see. I think we're almost done with topical use. So skin health, right, for imbalance. It can be used in a very low dilution. Thank you for all the hearts. That's so pretty. Um, how long does it last when you inhale? Do you mean how long does it affect your body? If, if you mean how long does it last when you inhale it as far as your body goes? 
I think that would be okay. That would be different per person. Again, we all have different metabolisms. We are all different. Generally speaking, if you are using an inhaler, again, it, it totally depends on why you're inhaling. Probably every three or four hours, you know, two or three or four times a day, maybe. It depends why. Um, the correct answer is as needed, to be honest. It's as needed. So if you're going to use it for headaches, how should you use inhale or topically? I prefer recommending that if you're trying to get rid of your headache that you ch you try um, to inhale first. That can be very effective for most people. Just simply inhaling can be very relaxing and can help a lot. Um, some people find that they can only do a topical application. But I would suggest inhaling first and if that doesn't work then try a topical dilution that works for you. I would start with around 2 or 3% and then slowly go up from there. So inhale for how long each time? I, I just take a, a deep breath. Something like that. And you can do that twice or three times. I don't recommend probably more than three times. If, if you add 15 drops, you know, that can be pretty intense, especially if you're sticking it right on your nose or right, kind of right up in your nose. Some of them, the plastic ones can really get up there, which is great for congestion. So as far as how many times and how far up your nose you put it, you know, that really depends on what kind of impact that you want. But I like to just do like one big inhale and that's what I recommend. You can, you can try more than one, up to you. It's kind of depending on what your specific issue is, but usually once, you're welcome, usually once is sufficient. Yeah, I know, you laugh when you use the plastic inhalers. Yeah, I like these. They're just a little classier looking personally, but, I mean, the other ones work too. Can you overdose? Um, it depends what you mean by overdose. You can't really, um, you can't overdose specifically, but you, you can overdo inhalation. Um, if you find that you're getting lightheaded, or if you actually get yourself a headache, or feel kind of woozy or nauseated, then that could be that you have overdone it. This can happen when you diffuse for too long. It can happen if you maybe take too many breaths when you're using your inhaler or you're doing it too often. You know, essential oils are really effective and they can lower bl blood pressure somewhat. I'm not saying dangerously, but you can feel a little kind of woozy if, if you're inhaling too much. Yes, exactly, exactly. They do definitely look like tampons, the plastic ones. Yes. So yeah, you still need to be careful when you inhale. And if you are, if you're finding yourself feeling a little bit woozy, it will pass. It will pass pretty quickly. You know, just sit down kind of, you know, take a deep breath of clean air and, you know, give yourself a little bit of time. There's no, um, I will say there's no lasting permanent damage. If you do that, it will work itself out. My website is using eossafely.com. It's using eossafely.com. Yes, the aluminum ones from River Tree Life are beautiful. You think you've overdosed? <laughs> Your anxiety inhaler has about seven drops. I always crave more inhalations and two or three should I add drops. I would. If you're using seven drops and you're really finding that you need two or three inhalations, go to the 15 drops. Uh, that's what I would do. And then see if you can get away with one inhal inhalation. And you might need one or two inhalations, but definitely increased if you're finding yourself needing more than one. Yes. So for skin health, okay, clove essential oil is also good for topical skin issues, such as um, fungal issues, athlete's foot. With athlete's foot, you do want to use a low dilution because it is already skin that's really not, um, it's really not that great. It's damaged skin. So you do want to be careful on the dilution overall. Of course, with clove, it's a half a percent, but I would probably only add another half a percent of something else and stick to a 1%. Do I have these recipes on a website? I do not have these recipes on my website. Serene Living will have these recipes on their website. I did write these recipes for them, um, and their website will be live hopefully today, and we'll see, and you can find those there. So that's where you can find the recipes and they're very specific recipes. I made sure to be very, very specific and they are broken down by age, generally speaking. Um, 
for age and it's very very well done if I do say so myself. <laughs> I'm very anal, very thorough and it's it's extremely thorough, yes. And if you guys see this and have any questions or suggestions, please let me know. But as you know, I'm in the group a lot seeing questions, so I'm pretty much anticipating what anybody's going to ask. So hopefully I haven't left anything out. How many drops in an inhaler if you are blending clove and orange? You want a total of 15 drops. I mean, that's just a general guideline for inhalers. They hold 15 drops. Now, if you want to have a master blend of your clove and orange and then add 15 drops of that mixture to your inhaler, you can do that. Or you can add, you know, seven drops of clove and eight drops of orange, whatever you want to do. And if you can get more drops in there, then, you know, please try. Can clove be used for oral inflammation? Yes, it can. Now, for tooth pain, for tooth pain, I recommend that you put one drop of essential oil on a Q-tip and then you can rub that directly on your tooth, just the tooth itself. And that really can help with tooth pain. It, it's amazing how, how well that will numb your tooth if you're in pain. So if there are any more questions, because I think I'm finished. Actually, one more thing. It can actually be useful for insect and tick repellent. Does Serene Living have GCMS reports? Yes. They do. Unsafe for toddlers teething. Yes, absolutely unsafe for toddlers teething. See, it's okay for an adult on their tooth because it's on the actual tooth. But for gums, it's not recommended. And as I mentioned earlier, it's not safe to apply topically on children under two. Is it bad to use clove oil for pulling every day? No. I would recommend that if you're using one drop of clove essential oil that you have two teaspoons of a carrier. So if you only want one teaspoon of carrier that you're swishing with, then make up like an ounce bottle and add your drops that way. But yes, it's, it's definitely fine for daily oral health. It's really, really good. You can even put a drop on your toothbrush before you put your toothpaste on. That's what I do sometimes, just put a drop of clove and then put your toothpaste on, and then you can brush your teeth with that. So insect and tick repellent, you can add clove in um, a homemade insect repellent, and that recipe will be on the website as well. Um, but I can read it to you. Clove bud is one. There's there's other essential oils as well. Um, this recipe calls for clove bud, citronella, and geranium, and a total of 90, 85, 90, a total of 100 drops for eight ounces. I do have a recipe on my website too um, for um, for a bug repellent, but it also has hydrosols in it. And I know a lot of you guys don't have hydrosols on hand, um, but that can be found. If you go to my website using eosafely.com and you scroll down to the footer, I have the entire list of the contents of my website right there in the footer. It's, it's all categorized and you have the titles. So there's a category in recipes. You can click over there and you can see the tick repellent right there. So I think, I think I have everything out that I wanted to mention other than I am giving away, see, I totally, I lost my cap to this clove. And, oh, there it is. I'm giving away two bottles of clove essential oil by Serene Living and you can enter the giveaway on the website. It's again, it's using eosafely.com slash clove EO and there will be two winners. So on that page, you can scroll past the therapeutic properties, the benefits, the safety, and then you can see where you can use the rafflecopter widget to enter to win. So there'll be two winners. And for those of you who haven't seen the labels, there's some in the um, safety group on Facebook. There's a couple, there's lavender and there's eucalyptus and there's, um, or lavender, peppermint, and infatuation. But let me see if I can show you See if it will. Okay, it's too blurry. Ah. Yeah, it's not working. But anyways, right on the bottle, you can see it says inhale and diffuse. The link is using eosafely.com slash clove EO. Can I check the way? I actually did, Christina. I did look you up and I could not find you. So I do not know what to tell you about that. I do not have control over Rafflecopter. I just use their widget, so I have no idea how to. Ex I have no idea what's going wrong for you, 
why you are entering, but you're not, it's not accepting you. Um, but I did not see you listed, so I don't know what to say other than try it on a desktop or a laptop. Let's see if that works better than a phone. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea what to say to you guys. I can't enter. It frustrates me, but I don't know of any other really good way to, um, do giveaways. Rafflecopter, it keeps all that together in one spot. They use random.org to select the winner. And, you know, other than writing everybody's name down in a hat, <laughs> I really don't know how else to do it. So I'm really sorry for you guys. I can't enter based on that. But the bottles have inhale and diffuse, and then it has a section on topical. And it lists pregnancy, breastfeeding, children, and dog. And it tells you yes or no. So for clove, it says pregnancy, yes. Breastfeeding, yes. Children, yes. And dog, no for inhale and diffuse. And then topical, it says children, two plus, yes. And that means above the age of two, yes. And it has a topical max right here as well. And then the other side, it lists the safety considerations that I told you guys earlier about if you're going to have surgery, etc. If you use too much, it can cause irritation. Yes, it is great information on the label. I'm really happy with these labels. I really am. And it lists... Um, the ingredients, which of course for clove, it says 100% pure clove essential oil, steam distilled from the bud. So it has the country of origin, the botanical name, it has the plant part used, the method of extraction, and then there's a link to right here. Yes, I did read clove. Yes. Yay for the label! Yeah, this is, yes. Yeah. So you can see this is actually, you know what, it's so funny because I got my bottles earlier and they didn't have the the thing on the top yet. So I, I figured you guys would be noticing if there's something on the top or not and you would see that there wasn't. So I actually grabbed, <laughs> this is coffee. I actually grabbed a label off of another bottle and slapped it on here so it kind of look right, you know, for you guys that when you get yours, it'll be just like this, but it'll say, of course, glow on the top. So just to kind of fake you guys out a little bit, but it actually says coffee. <laughs> Do I have an overall measurement I can give for the label size? That is a good question. Um, I think I have, yes. Fabric tape so I can measure it. It is, it's a 10 mil bottle and it measures one and a quarter inches from top to bottom. And I mean, I don't know if you want to go around. The text is small. Okay. I will be honest. The text is small, but it is there and it is there for a reminder. Um, the website of course has this information as well. And it also, they will have the label for you that you can blow up and really see as well as the actual information and text that you can read. That's very readable there. Um, so hopefully, you know, there won't be many of you that have you know, really any trouble with this. It is small text. Yes, if you need reading glasses at the dollar store, yes, then you might need to get some, but it is there. You know, again, some people do have trouble reading smaller print, but if you already have trouble reading smaller print, you probably already have those reading glasses, in which case, you know, you're all set anyways. But, you know, I really wanted these to contain as much information as possible. So we are going to wrap up in about three minutes. So are there any other questions that you guys have on the topic of clove essential oil? Maybe somebody's talking. Oh, also I want to mention, thank you for the hearts. I also wanted to mention, okay, digestion, yes, you can inhale or you can dilute and apply topically to your abdomen or whatever specific, whatever specific spot has that issue. Is it okay with hiatal hernia? It is, yes. People on blood thinners should not apply. People on blood thinners probably should not apply. It's more of a caution. Um, I would not recommend, if, that, if you are on blood thinners, I would not recommend to you using clove essential oil topically at all or even inhaling it. But if you have a medical professional, naturopath, somebody that you can discuss this with and they are comfortable with you doing that, or if you are making that decision on your own and you are comfortable, then that is a decision that you can make for yourself. I'm just letting you know that that is something to be, to be warned about. 
gallbladder problems. Um, it might. It is analgesic. It may help you. Um, again, I cannot guarantee that this is going to work for everybody, um, but it can be useful. It is useful for pain. So whether or not it will help you with your gallbladder pain. Um, I know internal pain like that can be very painful, and I don't know if, if it will cut it for you or not, but it's worth a shot. You can give it a try. I did want to mention um, we are also giving away a copy of Essential Oil Safety by Robert Tisserand. We're actually giving two, two away. Um, two weeks and I'm using frankincense right now. Can I mix it? You can, yes, you can mix clove with frankincense. Just make sure that you are not going over the 0.5% dilution for clove. So to enter to win essential oil safety, you can go to using eosafely.com slash win EOS. And you can enter there. Yes, I'm really excited. Really excited to give two copies away to you guys. Real, real excited. And last I checked, there were a couple thousand entries, so let me just give it another peek and see. 2,912 entries. But do not be discouraged because two of you will win. That's two selections, so do not be discouraged. <laughs> I wish everybody could have a copy of Essential Oil Safety. And you guys would be able to choose if you want a hard copy or if you want a Kindle version. I will leave that up to you, to the winner, to decide which version that they would prefer. I have both versions myself. Um, I do like to search stuff um, by keywords, and instead of reading the entire, yes, better odds than the lottery, yes. Instead of reading the entire book cover to cover every time that I want to look something up, I just cheat and I go over to my Kindle for PC and I pop that up and I open Essential Oil Safety there and I can kind of scroll through and hit all of the key points of whatever I'm searching for, which is really handy. So, okay, um, you didn't get a confirmation when you registered, is that normal? Um, when you registered for what specifically? the giveaway. Um, yeah, you shouldn't, nobody should be getting any confirmation emails. It's all, everything's option, yeah, every, all of the options for entering are right in the widget. So I'm not aware of anybody having to receive any email confirmations. You're just kind of entered there. Um, if you want to see if you're entered or not, I can check for you. Just PM me on Facebook and let me know what, what your email addresses that you used, or I can just use your actual name. I can't tell from here what your first and last name is, but I can search that way and make sure that you are entered or not. You're welcome. It gives check marks. Yeah, it, it should denote on your end, but I don't think you receive any emails. Yes, both giveaways are through my website, and you can see if you go to using eossafely.com on the sidebar. If you're on mobile, the sidebars don't come up, but if you're on a laptop, on the sidebar, you can see it says using Clove Essential Oil Safely Free Mini Course. Click on that, and that's where you can enter to win the essential oils. And if you scroll down after my The Truth About Essential Oil Safety Book image, then you can see the Essential Oil Safety Book, and it says two winners. And if you click on that one, then you can enter to win the um, one of the copies of Essential Oil Safety. So that's really exciting. So I hope you guys can enter, and thank you for hopping on, and I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, I will have this recording up for anybody who missed it. So I hope you learned something about using clove essential oil safely, and next week we are going to be talking about aphrodisiacs. So if you go to blab.com slash, actually what you can do, just go to using eosafely.com, and right on the top I have where you can click to join the live mini course, and that's going to be on Blab, and I'll do it again on Monday. You're welcome. And you can sign up for that, so we'll be doing that next week. So thanks, guys. I appreciate you all coming. See you on the group.